Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. ESA astronaut files aircraft noise complaints in the DC area. Airbus says an autonomous flying taxi service is possible. JetSuite X says Santa Monica is illegally attempting to regulate air commerce. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's January 20th and this is Airborne Unlimited. We previously reported that studies indicate many complaints about airport noise come from a few people with a dedicated mission to file the complaints. It seems that one such person has been identified in the Washington, D.C. area. Well-known ESA astronaut Roberto Vittori moved his family to the Washington, D.C. area where he bought a house in the Hillendale neighborhood north of Georgetown. After moving there, instrument procedures at Ronald Reagan National Airport were changed because of next-gen shift in flight patterns. Vittori claims the noise is now intolerable and he admits to filing some 3,000 complaints since the changes in the flight patterns were implemented. However, according to the website The Outline, the Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority says it has received some 6,500 complaints from a single resident of the Fox Hill neighborhood west of Georgetown and does not mention a Hillendale resident. While there seems to be confusion as to who is actually filing all the noise complaints, the website reports that Vittori has stopped filing them. The noise is still there, but he's convinced his campaign was going nowhere. And so, excessive noise from next-gen route changes continues to be an issue. The Airbus Urban Mobility Division may conduct tests of an autonomous flying car later this year, according to Airbus CEO Tom Enders. Speaking at a conference in Munich earlier this week, Ender said that the company could fly a single-person concept aircraft by the end of the year. The goal would be to offer either single or multiple passenger vehicles that could be booked using an Uber-style app. Reuters reports that while the idea is only in the experimentation phase, Ender said Airbus takes the concept very seriously. He said that any vehicle developed would have to use clear energy to avoid further polluting cities. Enders also said that the concept of autonomous aerial transportation could help both national and local governments save billions on the construction and maintenance of roads, bridges, and other infrastructure. After the break, Santa Monica Airport backdoor attempt at shutting down air service. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airport Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The CEO of JetSuite X, which will begin operating the low-cost schedule service out of Santa Monica Airport next month, says the city is illegally attempting to regulate air commerce. Company CEO Alex Wilcox told the Santa Monica Lookout newspaper that airport director Stelios McRides is refusing to process an application for a commercial operating permit at the airport for a hangar lease. Wilcox said his company can start its operation without such a permit, which the city disputes. McRide said in a letter to Wilcox that the application could not be processed because it is incomplete, because it lacks information including an environmental analysis. It's reported that Wilcox is taking his case directly to the FAA. He says he is certain the agency will rule against the airport in what he describes as a backdoor attempt to shut down air service at Santa Monica Airport. It's Friday and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. While the aviation world has more than its share of bad news, Jim thinks that ultimately we need to look at 2016 as a positive year, with more of the same in the offing for 2017. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, folks. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, 
there's still a strong feeling of malaise in the GA industry. We've been through several years of downturn. There's some bad news for our friends who have not had a very good 2016 based on several years of overt regulation, bad economy, bad business decisions, and a government that just doesn't seem to recognize the true value of aviation. At the same time, the thing I want to emphasize is the gains and the wins we've had. Uh, I've oft quoted uh, Buzz Aldrin in a conversation we had many years ago about how true revolution takes place as a series of small evolutionary changes that eventually produce a cascade effect that produces the ultimate revolution that changes industries and changes worlds and societies. And that's kind of what we're looking for from here on out, a real change in our society. But in the meantime, let's also look at the fact that Pilot's Bill of Rights too came about. It isn't all that we hoped it to be, but the fact of the matter is it's a heck of a lot better than what we had previous. And let's face it, Jim Inhofe is bound and determined to make sure there's a three or four or five uh, versions of this as necessary to make sure we save the future pilot population from overt regulation and unfairness. At the same time, the Part 23 regs finally came through. And while, once again, they're not all we might have wanted, they're certainly a far sight better than what we had. And the potential is for far greater. Uh, the EASTC program, the things that came out of that are extraordinary. And as of this morning, we're talking about an eased PMA process that will allow for greater innovation and greater adaptation of a whole host of gear into tomorrow's cockpits affordably, safely, properly. And then, of course, there's the third class medical. Once again, we didn't get what we wanted. We didn't get all of what we wanted, but we got a lot. And it is a blueprint for the future. It certainly lessens the stress of dealing with this. It lessens the regulatory burden. And in the long run, folks that should not have had too much of a medical problem outside of the heartbreak of dealing with the feds aren't going to have a whole lot more. And as a matter of fact, a whole lot less. So we are making progress. It's not all that bad. Yes, we've got a huge amount of work to do in the future. There's no question that there are great challenges ahead of us. But let's count 2016 as a win. Not a great win, but any positive change in a positive direction is a positive outcome. For the Aero News Network Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Thinking positively. After these messages, Technom's P2012 Traveler will debut at Friedrichshafen. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, Bree Cross is going to summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Thanks, Laura. The twin Lycoming engined 11 seat Technam P2012 Traveler prototype will take center stage at Technam stand at the Friedrichshafen Global Aviation Show's 25th anniversary in April. The P2012 Traveler is the largest aircraft Technam has built to date. A new light may be shining on the case of the DB Cooper hijacking of a Northwest Orient 727 in 1971. It's reported a Thai Cooper left behind has particles in it that link him to being a Boeing employee. It seems we just can't turn loose of a good mystery. Forbes contributor John Goglia opines that discontinuing the search for Malaysian Airlines missing flight MH370 may be wrong. He says the families need closure and that further investigation could detect a systemic problem with the Boeing 777. Naval Air Station Meridian reported a T-45C Goshawk trainer jet aircraft went down near the airfield last Tuesday while conducting a training flight. The student and instructor pilot were able to eject safely and no injuries on the ground were reported. 
Piper Aircraft has announced the appointment of Ron Gunnarsson as Vice President, Sales, Marketing and Customer Support. In his role, Mr. Gunnarsson will be responsible for developing and executing sales and marketing strategies to sustain Piper Aircraft's continuing growth. That's a trip around the patch. Back to you, Laura. Thanks, Bree. DAR's Airplane Business Unit has announced the delivery of 54 TBM-900 and TBM-930s in 2016 which the company says underscores the success for these latest members of its very fast turboprop aircraft family. DAR reports that North America remained the lead market for TBM aircraft, accounting for 41 of last year's deliveries to customers in the United States and Canada. Europe was in solid second position with nine deliveries, composed of four aircraft provided to the United Kingdom, two for France, and one each in Germany, Italy, Poland, and Switzerland. Latin America ranked third, and that one delivery went to a customer in Thailand. Nicholas Chabert, the Senior Vice President of the DAR Airplane Business Unit, said in part, quote, The 2016 results confirm that customers worldwide continue to appreciate the value proposition of our TBM product line, which we extended last year with a TBM 930 version. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.